Prime Minister, what do you think of the opposition leader using the hashtag men going their own way? Mr. Polyev deliberately reached out and courted anti-women, far-right extremist groups to advance his political aims. This is absolutely unacceptable, unworthy of any Canadian politician. He needs to take accountability for it and apologize to women. En français là-dessus, est-ce que vous avez des preuves que tu l'as vraiment fait ça? Et ce matin, il a dénoncé la misogynie en chambre. Pierre Polyev a choisi euh, d'aller chercher euh, des groupes anti-femmes, misogynes, euh, extrémistes de droite pour avancer euh, son agenda politique. C'est absolument inacceptable. Il doit non seulement s'expliquer, euh, mais s'excuser auprès des femmes canadiennes. Est-ce que vous avez des preuves comme quoi il a vraiment fait, que c'est vraiment lui qui savait? Le parti dit qu'il ne le savait pas. On a vu à quel point euh, M. Poliev utilise les médias sociaux de façon très euh, ciblée pour aller chercher, pour mobiliser euh, des, des supporters. Euh, le fait qu'il ait choisi d'aller chercher euh, des organismes qui sont anti-femmes, qui prônent la violence contre les femmes, euh, c'est complètement indigne de n'importe quel politicien canadien et j'espère qu'il va s'excuser. Euh, j'espère qu'il va comprendre que euh, c'est inacceptable au Canada. Merci beaucoup. Just finding out about the conservatives' use of... Uh, data to try and reach uh, the incel community, which I understand is uh, a common practice now amongst conservatives. This is really, really dangerous. And I'm so, I'm actually shaking. I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed that a partisan group would put the safety of women at risk in order to um, further elevate their, their, I guess, their, their presence in a, in a space that most of us would condemn. You know, research has shown that gender-based violence, that uh, violence against women, is um, linked with other violence in our communities. We have an action plan, a gender-based violence action plan. We have work that's happening with provinces and territories. And we have the opposition talking incessantly about the safety of women. And we have a leader who's willing to throw all that work away that this House has done over the last seven years in order to gain some wind in his, his leadership race. And I'm, I'm actually shaken by it. This is women that I work with, people that I know, um, that you know, face violence in their lives um, every day. And so those of us who are elected have a special sort of responsibility. And that is to put aside partisanship for the safety of our communities and to really be here with a sincere focus of protecting, especially the most vulnerable in our communities. When we think about the rates of violence that Indigenous women face in this country, when we think about the rates of gender-based violence and how it's associated with mass murders that we've seen in our own Canadian history, it's completely unacceptable. And so I'm really, I'm quite shaken by it, and I'm, I'm scared about what the future looks like if this is in fact what the Conservative Party is willing to do to win. Do you have any evidence the Conservatives have something to do, or Mr. Paul Yeps has something to do with it? My understanding is that there is evidence, yes, that the Conservative Party used data and Willingly? Uh, willingly to reach that particular audience. And listen, uh, using words like woke, uh, like we saw a member of the opposition do the other day, it's really specifically reaching into an audience that is rejecting work on making sure that the most vulnerable have equal opportunities to succeed. Listen, I came to this place because I truly believe, and I think that evidence demonstrates, when people have a chance to succeed, regardless of what they're birth story is or their social location is that all of us do better, that our communities do better, that we have safer communities, and that we have stronger communities. And so people that are undermining that in this place, it's, it's, it's beyond disappointing. It's actually kind of scary. So what does it tell you if they're going into this dark place to get votes? I don't know. <laughs> Such a good question. What does it tell me? Uh, what it tells me is that it's shameless and it's, it's selfish. It's actually about now, not about creating the best Canada possible. Listen, I have no problem debating with members of the opposition about whether or not to reach a more prosperous Canada, a fairer Canada, a safer Canada. Policy X is better than policy Y. Legislation is either robust enough or it's not. The budget is spending enough money in one area and not enough in another. Those are really reasonable debates, but to willfully try to incent hate is not a Canada that I think any of us want to live in. And to stand up and purport that you're standing up for women, especially around the world, 
and not stand up for women in Canadian communities, that is shocking and it's dangerous. And I, I think where Canadians don't want to go. I think we all have moms and sisters and aunts and, you know, grandmothers and people in our own lives who have experienced violence, who have experienced controlling, abusive relationships. And do you think that those women in particular would be happy knowing that a political party, a leader of a political party, is willing to elevate himself using and fanning those flames of, of hate? So what are you calling for? He already addressed misogyny in the House of Commons. What else would you like to see? Well, I would like to see that he's not having a double message. He maybe is standing up in the House of Commons and saying things to one audience, but clearly using tools and saying another thing to another audience. And that's incredibly cynical. It's uh, not what I would hope that people would expect of a leader of a, of a major federal party. Thank you. Thank you. Hey there, everyone. I'm Jennifer O'Connell, Member of Parliament for Pickering Uxbridge. I um, just want to start today to s speak about how horrified and disgusted I am to learn that Mr. Polyev purposely has been targeting and courting violent anti-women incel movements for his own political and personal gain. These movements promote hatred towards women, violence, including promoting the rape and murder of women. And this has been going on for more than four and a half years. Mr. Polyev has not come out to denounce these remarks and we, or the actions of himself and his team. We call on Mr. Polyev to come out publicly to apologize, denounce, and take some responsibility for the promotion of hate and violence to women in this country. He is running to be, he claims, Prime Minister, yet he continues to promote violence against women. And it's unacceptable, and we call on him to act now. Merci, Jennifer. Alors, Soraya martin Farda, je suis députée de comté de Hochelaga. Je suis, comme ma collègue ce matin, horrifiée et dégoûtée d'apprendre que le chef du Parti conservateur a utilisé des référencements à des cellules des INCEL qui font la promotion de euh, groupes misogynes qui euh, s'attaquent euh, non seulement aux droits des femmes, mais qui euh, demandent quasiment qu'on les viole, qu'on leur fasse la violence. Et de savoir qu'un chef de parti qui veut être premier ministre du Canada accepte que ça soit utilisé depuis maintenant plus, plus de quatre ans euh, et est utilisé délibérément des stratégies euh, vraiment qui... Euh, qui ne font pas, en fait, la promotion des femmes, mais bien le contraire, c'est tout à fait dégoûtant et horrifiant. Et non seulement il doit s'excuser, mais il doit euh, s'expliquer pour avoir euh, permis que ça dure aussi longtemps au sein de cette organisation, au sein de ce parti. Et comme ma collègue, je pense que euh, le chef du Parti conservateur, M. Polev, a beaucoup d'explications à donner aujourd'hui. Well, I th sorry, thank you. I think the first consequence is that Mr. Polyev needs to take responsibility for his actions. He needs to come clean with Canadians, and in particular women. And how does he possibly justify targeting groups that, that attract violent rhetoric towards women? And we have seen real-world consequences of this. I come from just outside of Toronto. The Toronto Van Attack have associate, attacker has associated with these groups. So the first... Uh, consequence should be accountability for Mr. Polyev. He wants to be a leader. It's time for him to act and stand up against this horrific action that he and his party have taken. What do you make of uh, Mr. Polyev's response to this uh, so far? Um, when uh, my colleague uh, first put the question to his office, uh, they removed the hashtag <laughs> from all the videos and then escaped the statement saying that they didn't misogyny, sexism, and extremism in all its forms. Uh, he said it's basically the same thing. Just what do you think of his overall response so far? Just denouncing sexism, but not really addressing how this hashtag wound up on his videos for the past four and a half years. Well, first of all, I want to thank the press to do that. Like, because of the press, Polyev and his team took those hashtags out of 
the, the, the référencement, right? So they, but it's been there for four years. So what happened the past four years? So it has to account and it has to be uh, made accountable for these actions. And he has to make sure that this will never happen again, but he has to apologize for Canadian women that actually uh, feel like ourselves this morning, mm -hmm. horrified and disgusted by that. And if I could just add to that, my message to Mr. Polyev, if he believes in what he says, prove it. Take accountability, denounce it publicly, apologize to Canadian women, and ensure that anybody that is involved in these dark places on the internet that have very real world consequences are never welcome in the Conservative Party of Canada. So to Mr. Polyev, prove it. En fait, je te dirais qu'on a beaucoup entendu parler de certains groupes qui prônent la suprématie mâle, masculine. Euh, Est-ce que celui-là et d'autres, on en entend parler? Est-ce qu'aujourd'hui, la personne qui est devant la télé, qui vous écoute aujourd'hui, en a entendu parler? Non. Et c'est euh, malheureux que les actions du chef du Parti conservateur, Paul Yev, font qu'on leur donne cette tribune-là dans les médias aujourd'hui. Mais en même temps, c'est important de le dénoncer. Puis c'est important que M. Paul Yev, aujourd'hui, comme disait ma collègue, s'excuse publiquement pour que le Parti conservateur ait utilisé ces référencements est totalement inacceptable. Pensez-vous qu'il y a une possibilité que ça ait été utilisé de manière accidentelle ou qu'on s'arrête? Bien, on peut euh, accidentellement utiliser quelque chose pendant 30 secondes puis s'en rendre compte, mais quatre ans et demi euh, me semble pas être un accident. Il me semble être une stratégie délibérée d'aller chercher des créneaux d'appui pour euh, avoir des gains politiques pour euh, le parti. Euh, je vous dirais que oui. Après quatre ans et demi, euh, je pense que ce n'est plus un accident. Vous avez vu comme moi la campagne de Poliev, il parlait de trentenaires qui étaient dans leur sous-sol. Euh, Qu'est-ce que ça nous dit sur euh, le public qui était visé d'avoir utilisé un tel hashtag? Si on... Je pense que euh, M. Poliev euh, a démontré durant cette campagne avoir utilisé toutes les mesures possibles pour augmenter euh, son, euh, son outreach euh, au niveau des médias sociaux. Euh, et il le fait sur, dans ce cas-ci sur l'eau des femmes et sur le droit des femmes et sur le droit de protéger euh, les femmes. Et je pense que c'est pour ça qu'aujourd'hui, il doit s'excuser. What's your message to conservative women? <laughs> well, I hope conservative women in the House will stand up mm -hmm. and will speak out for their leader that they voted for that did not respect women in this country. I would just add, stand up. Uh, Michelle Rumpel Garner, Rachel Harder, Melissa Lansman have all spoken probably this week about standing up for women's rights. Where are they now? And maybe worry a little less about how woke uh, people might be and stand up for the protection of women and stand up for the, within their own party about denouncing the promotion of violence, murder and rape against women that is associated with these hashtags that Mr. Polyev specifically targeted and courted for his own personal and political gain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We should all be responsible for the hashtags we put on our own websites and, 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 and videos. That this is, this is unacceptable. It's dangerous. It, it promotes hatred of women. This is unbelievable. Who's responsible for this hashtag business? Who do you think should take the ball? What staffer? Seems kind of weird. I'd really like if the Prime Minister would take responsibility for those groping allegations of the reporter, for his blackface. I mean, we have a Prime Minister of this country who's failed to take responsibility over and over again for racist, sexist, and misogynistic actions. I'm very proud of my leader for uh, for just coming right out and taking responsibility and immediately rectifying the situation. I think that shows real leadership, and it's about time that we had a leader in the House of Commons that did that. Thank you. What do you make of the hashtag business in QP? Should one of your staff uh, apologize for that or get fired? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think I think Pierre handled himself well on that today. Yeah, I thought he did okay. The uh, we took took credit or like took responsibility for it, got rid of it. Uh, said, hey, it's unacceptable. Um, I wish the Liberals had that kind of reaction when they have problems like this. Thank you for stopping.
Have you heard uh, any update from the Red Cross on when they'll start seeing uh, funds flowing to people in the Atlantic provinces uh, for Fiona damage? Um, I haven't actually spoken directly with the Red Cross. I've seen just enormous generosity, of course, which we're matching right now. Uh, the reality is uh, we're going to need help for a significant period of time. I think there's some immediate needs uh, that we're going to see responses, not just from the Red Cross, but from federal and provincial governments as well. Uh, but the reality is, like, I'm still driving over power lines in my community at home. Uh, we're seeing uh, places that don't have power. My mom and dad got power yesterday morning, what, 13 days into this mess. Uh, trees down everywhere, uh, roads torn up like you wouldn't believe. Uh, this is going to be a long time rebuilding. Uh, we're going to have to sink some serious resources into rebuilding infrastructure and making people, uh, make sure people have the support they need. We are seeing already certain charitable organizations like the United Way that are opening applications for fundings locally. So we are starting to see some of these supports are flowing already. Uh, but my hope is they're going to continue to flow for a significant period of time. Is there any plan to uh, you know, reach out to the Red Cross or any other charitable organizations to get a bit more of a concrete timeline for the people suffering right now on when they can start to expect to see these funds? Yeah, one of the things that I, I think you got to appreciate is the way that the emergency response works in these kinds of uh, really unfortunate scenarios is the lead on the emergency response is typically taken by the uh, local levels of government, the provincial government, certain municipalities, and we're there to backstop a lot of the costs. And then the Red Cross will come in uh, to deploy resources or to make grants available in accordance with some of the demands that are set by uh, or identified by local governments. There are constant conversations. I've been in touch with a lot of my provincial counterparts on a regular basis. Uh, obviously with some of my federal counterparts with the Prime Minister being back home twice last week. Uh, these things are happening in real time every day and uh, I anticipate some of the fundings already starting to flow but we're going to see uh, increased volumes in the days ahead. Uh, I do have to run in for question period folks but really appreciate it and thank you for covering it. It means a lot to me. It's, uh, no, no worries.